Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we're checking out VRM thermal performance of some more affordable or really the most affordable X570 motherboards on the market and we have boards from MSI, Gigabyte, ASUS and ASRock. If you missed it we've already looked at the higher end, pretty much the flagship boards. I also looked at more recently the $200 options from the companies just mentioned. So if you've missed that, I'll put a link in the video description. You can go check that out if you're interested. Anyway, it is now time to check out the $160 to $170 US boards. But before we jump into the results, let's quickly go over each board's VRM design. So I think we'll start with the X570A Pro from MSI. This board costs just $160 US and it really has all the essentials. There's a good number of USB 3 ports here. You get six SATA ports. Uh, what else have we got? We've got a pair of M.2 uh, ports there or slots. And we also have a BIOS flashback button. So that's quite handy. It's there. The VRM heat sinks look decent as well, but I suspect we are going to be uh, rather underwhelmed here. The X570A Pro features the exact same VRM design of the gaming edge. And let's not beat around the bush, that thing was pretty horrible in our previous $200 X570 board test. So just as a quick recap, this means once again we find the Infineon IR35201 controller, and from it MSI takes four signals, which are then split using the IR3598 phase doublers. They're using discrete on-semiconductor MOSFETs, and on the high side we have eight 4C029N MOSFETs, and on the low side, eight 4C024N MOSFETs. As I said, this worked very poorly on the gaming edge when faced with our open testbed 3900X stress test. So that being the case, I'm not that keen to put this model to the test given the heat sinks are smaller, but of course we'll look at the results in a moment. Then moving on, we have the Gigabyte X570 Gaming X. And I have to say, upon face value, this board looks much more impressive than the MSI X570A Pro. You get a much bigger chipset cooler, so that means the fan probably won't have to spin up as much or at least as hard when it does. You also get sort of this heat spreader on the primary M.2 slots. So that's kind of nice. And again, there are two M.2 slots. There's a sort of this plastic shroud thing over the back of the IO, which kind of hides the ugly ports, which we didn't see on the MSI board. Depends if you care about that sort of thing. It's far from essential. But what is quite nice is the pre-installed IO shield. So. I quite like that. It saves me from losing that, which I, I tend to do. And then the VRM on this board, it does look to be quite, quite a bit beefier than what we saw on the MSI board. All that said, MSI does appear to offer a better audio solution and a slightly better USB configuration on the IO panel. But of course, we're not reviewing the boards here. Rather, the focus is on the VRM and Gigabyte has an interesting design for us. For the controller, they're using the Intersil ISL69147, and for the vCore portion of the VRM, they're taking five signals and doubling them using Intersil ISL6617A phase doublers. On the high side, we have 10 on-semiconductor 4C10N MOSFETs, and interestingly, on the low side, we have 20 on-semiconductor 4C06N MOSFETs. That's a crap load of MOSFETs, and to fit them all in, Gigabyte has been forced to place half of the low side MOSFETs on the rear side of the board, along with the doublers. As the cheapest X570 board Gigabyte offers, the Gaming X is the only board to feature this design. The Elite, which we've already looked at, is quite a bit better, as it packs a dozen Vache 50 amp power stages for a rather powerful 12 phase VRM. Next up, we have the ASUS Prime. X570-P, and this is another really interesting motherboard. Despite costing just $170 US, it does pack a pretty decent VRM. In fact, some of you might be quite surprised to learn that it's the exact same VRM you'll find on the ASUS ROG Maximus 11 Hero, and that was one of their higher-end Z390 motherboards. And yeah, that's kind of funny because I gave ASUS quite a hard time uh, about that board, not so much about the VRM, but more the fact that they were advertising it as an eight phase VRM. And yeah, boy oh boy, did I cop some blowback from the ASUS fanboys on that one. Who knew board makers had fanboys? What a time to be alive. 
Anyway, the Z390 Hero packed a fat four-phase VRM, and we felt the design was pretty cheap for a $300 motherboard. Turns out we were probably right, as ASUS is now offering the exact same VRM on their cheapest X570 motherboard, which, as I said a moment ago, cost just $170 US. So this means once again we find the ASP1106 controller, and from it ASUS are taking just four signals, and again they're not doubled. So it is a four-phase V-Core VRM. Each phase features a pair of Vache SIC639 power stages, which actually makes it the best design here, at least on paper. The X570 Tough really impressed in a recent $200 X570 roundup, and it packed an extra power stage per phase, so I'm expecting the Prime X570P to be pretty similar in terms of thermal performance. Finally, we have the ASRock. It's a bit further over here, but I've got it. We have the ASRock X570 Pro 4. So this actually isn't their most basic motherboard, at least for the X570 chipset. I think they have a $150 model, but we don't have that on hand. And since this is priced uh, quite similarly to the other three boards, I thought we'd, we'd include this one rather than their cheapest board. So anyway, this is another $170 US X570 motherboard. And yeah, it's reasonably well equipped. It has a similar IO sort of configuration to the MSI board. So there's plenty of USB ports there. You also get HDMI and a display uh, output. So if you want to put an APU on there, you certainly can do so. Uh, there's also a few other nice features. You get again, a sort of a heat spreader on the primary M.2 slot. You also get a Wi-Fi M.2 slot and then a second one for your SSD. So. Yeah, that's quite nice. Reasonably well-equipped motherboard there. And then it has just a massive heatsink here on the, uh, the V-Core VRM. Yeah, that heatsink really is massive. It's bigger than anything you'll find on any other boards. So yeah, ASRock are giving us the most metal in this price range. In total, it weighs 246 grams. That's almost 50% heavier than the Intel box cooler. Of course, it won't work nearly as well given the limited surface area, but still for a VRM heatsink on a sub $200 motherboard, it is quite impressive. ASRock's obviously gone with this bulky heatsink in an effort to try and make up for what really is quite a lackluster VRM. They're using the UP9505PQGW controller, and four signals are taken for the V-Core portion of the VRM. They're then doubled using the UPI UP1961SQ phase doubler. As for the MOSFETs, we find eight high side and eight low side discrete drivers. On the high side, we have Sinopower SM4337 MOSFETs, and on the low side, Sinopower SM4336 MOSFETs. The SOC portion of the VRM uses the same components for two phases, but there's a doubling of components for both the high and low side MOSFETs, and none of the components are passively cooled. So that's the ASRock X570 Pro 4, and I think now it's time to see how it and the other three budget X570 boards handle our extreme stress test with the Ryzen 9 3900X. As usual for the load testing, we'll be running Blender for an hour, and then I'll be reporting the peak temperatures on various parts of the board. And all testing has been conducted on an open air test bench with no direct airflow over the board. And uh, normally I also test inside a case, so a bit similar to how you guys would have things set up, but that is massively time consuming to install. Well, I'll be doing around 20 motherboards in total. So yeah, very time consuming, and I wanna sort of save that for when we have the 3950X, so I'm not doing just a stupid amount of VRM testing twice, which I kind of am anyway, but yeah, we'll keep the configurations to, to one for now. <laughs> then again, for those of you unaware, to record all the temperatures, I'm using a digital thermometer with K-type thermocouples, and I'm reading the peak MOSFET temperature, so the surface of the MOSFET, and then the PCB temperature, which is on the back side of the board. So there's about six probes that I put on the back and the top to uh, make sure that we find the hottest spot. And usually I uh, reset all those twice, so to make sure we have the most accurate results possible. Okay, so here's how the boards handled our test conditions out of the box. The only setting manually adjusted in the BIOS was XMP, which was enabled. Then using the Ryzen Master software within Windows, PBO Plus Auto OC was enabled. Here we see that the ASUS Prime X570P was by far the best performer of the pack, peaking at just 66 degrees, which is quite incredible. In fact, it's a bit too good, and I'll explain why in a moment when we compare it to the other X570 motherboards that we've already tested, such as the X570 Tough. For now, let's look at how the other boards performed. 
The ASRock X570 Pro 4 came in second, peaking 14 degrees higher than the Prime X570P. Still, that's a good result for a $170 board, and it means under more favourable conditions, the board will be operating at very safe and manageable temperatures. Surprisingly, the Gigabyte X570 Gaming X ran 6 degrees hotter than the X570 Pro 4. And I say surprised here because I really did expect Gigabyte to claim second place in this testing. We did find a similar thing with the Aorus Elite. On paper it looked very strong, but in practice it did slightly under-deliver. Then we have the MSI X570A Pro, which not only provided a horrible result, but it also actually failed this test, as the board caused the CPU to throttle when we measured a PCB temperature of 115 degrees, and I'll show that towards the end of the video. For now, let's see how these budget boards handle the 3900X once overclocked. Here are the results for the manual 3900X overclock to 4.3 GHz using 1.4 volts, and remarkably, the Prime X570P only sees a 7 degree increase in operating temperature. That's really impressive given that the ASRock board saw a 16 degree increase, 19 degrees for Gigabyte, and then no real change for MSI as the board already failed our previous test due to a throttling issue. For those of you looking at overclocking or wish to have a broad upgrade path, Perhaps you want to try and snag a second-hand 3950X in a few years' time. For those users, the ASUS Prime X570P is by far the best option here. Short of that, the ASRock X570 Pro 4 is also quite decent, despite running 23 degrees hotter than the Prime. It was certainly decent, though, relative to the Gigabyte Gaming X, and then, of course, miles better than the MSI X570A Pro. Still, I have to admit I'm confused as to how the Prime X570P has done so well here. If we compare it to all the other boards tested previously under the same conditions, we see that it ran 7 degrees cooler than the X570 Tough, a board that essentially has the same VRM, but with an extra power stage per phase. So it makes little sense that the Prime would run cooler, let alone 7 degrees cooler. Now, because of this, I did retest the Prime X570P not once, but rather twice. I stuck K-type probes all over the bloody thing, and every time the results came back exactly the same. I even checked the performance of the board when it was at the peak temperature, just to make sure there wasn't any kind of micro throttling going on that I couldn't detect, but the board performed exceptionally well, just like a high-end X570 board such as the Gigabyte Aorus Extreme. As for the MSI X570A Pro running quite a bit cooler than the Gaming Edge, well, that was of course due to the board throttling, the CPU at a much lower temperature. So again, this is an invalid result from MSI. Basically a fail, and I'll show you some footage of what went on in a moment. Then we have the ASRock X570 Pro 4, which does quite well relative to the more expensive boards. It was just a few degrees hotter than the Steel Legend, for example. Then finally, the Gigabyte Gaming X. That, on the other hand, was, I'd say, quite disappointing. Running 18 degrees hotter than the Aorus Elite really isn't a good result. So at this point, I'm at a bit of a loss as to why the Prime X570P runs so cool here. I admit it makes very little sense, but I am confident in the test method and its accuracy. Either there is a perfectly good technical explanation for why the Prime is running so well, or ASUS has just been able to pull the wool over my eyes with some kind of trickery. All I can tell you for certain is that the board is running the 3900X at the correct frequencies, performance was exceptionally good, and the VRM temperatures were as reported. I will say that now that I've tested these boards, it is quite interesting to look back at those ASUS slides that leaked out where they claimed the Prime X570P amongst the rest of their boards uh, were the bee's knees. But this board in particular, uh, yeah, ASUS pretty much said it trashes the Gigabyte Gaming X and the MSI A Pro, uh, pretty much showing them to be a joke in their comparison. They tested all three boards without the heat sinks installed using a stock Ryzen 5 3600. Not sure what the airflow situation was, but damn, their results are very, very similar to mine. The ASUS Prime hit 63 degrees in their test, and then it hit 66 degrees in my test. The Gaming X hit 83 degrees in their test, 86 in mine, and the MSI A Pro hit 103 degrees in their test, 115 degrees in mine, which Makes sense. We're pretty much seeing thermal runaway with the 3900X, and detonation is only avoided by throttling the CPU. So it looks like the ASUS marketing slides aren't actually as full of it as we first thought. And I have to admit, I, I probably wouldn't have called that one. Let's change gears for a moment and talk about the 
disaster, I suppose, that is the MSI X570A Pro. Given what we'd recently found with the Gaming Edge, we knew this board wasn't going to be particularly good. I think, well, I was expecting it to suck, so I guess it hasn't let me down. Uh, the heat sinks on this particular model are even smaller than what you find on the Gaming Edge, and it's the exact same VRM design. So, yeah, it was never going to go well, so expectations were met, I suppose. In both the PBO and manual overclock tests, the board quickly heated up to a PCB temperature of 115 degrees, and then upon doing so, would drop all the cores of the 3900X down to just 547 megahertz. At that frequency, the system basically stops working. The CPU remained at this frequency until the VRM temperature dropped back down to 90 degrees. And by the way, the VR MOS readout and hardware info matched the reading from our K-type thermocouple on the back side of the board, almost exactly. So in a 21 degree room with no direct airflow, it took roughly a minute for the VRM temp to drop back down from 115 degrees to 90 degrees. And then once the CPU ramped back up, it took about another minute before it cook itself, and then the process would just repeat over and over again. Now, if you're using the MSI X570A Pro in an environment with a low ambient temperature like I am, but you're providing good airflow across the board, then you should be able to avoid throttling. The throttling issue, well, shouldn't be an issue. In fact, for you know an hour long blender workload, the board should only peak, I'd estimate at around 80 degrees. However, as I explained Earlier in the video, I'm not including the results for the more favorable airflow uh, configuration inside a case as I'm saving all that, that fun hard work for when we have the Ryzen 9 3950X. The idea here is to show a worst case scenario so we can learn which boards offer the best VRM and then the boards that do will be able to handle the higher end CPUs such as the, well, the 3900X, the 3950X uh, with ease. And that makes them better investments in the long run. Also, it's worth keeping in mind that while we aren't providing the boards with direct airflow, they haven't been installed in a poorly ventilated case either, which acts somewhat like an oven, especially in a hot environment. And we've seen operating temperature reports from viewers vary quite massively depending on where they're located. Not everyone can afford to run an air conditioner all day, and I've heard from fellow Aussies who live up north that our VRM thermal testing is vital information for them, as their ambient room temperature almost never drops below 30 degrees. So in a 30 degree climate, for example, you will notice a big difference between the MSI X570A Pro and the ASUS Prime X570P when running high-end CPUs in core heavy workloads for reasonable periods of time. But for those of you buying something like the Ryzen 5 3600, for example, it really doesn't matter which one of these boards you purchase, at least right now. But as I alluded to earlier, if you hope to snag a secondhand 3900X or 3950X two or three years down the track, you'll be very thankful you did your research and bought a board with a solid VRM. So in summary, the ASUS Prime X570P is hands down the best board here and by some margin. If for whatever reason you don't like the ASUS board, the next best thing is the ASRock X570 Pro 4, followed by the Gigabyte X570 Gaming X, and then like the Gaming Edge, I highly recommend avoiding the MSI X570A Pro. And I think that's just about gonna do it for this one. I apologize for those of you who were hoping that this update, this, this installment in my X570 VRM testing series, I would be looking at the $350 to $400 boards. I was meant to add the Gigabyte uh, X570 Aorus Master and the MSI Meg X570 Ace to my results, but there's been a bit of a delay getting the Ace. Uh, hopefully I'll have that for uh, an update next week. So yeah, the content's been delayed till at least then, but yeah, hopefully you'll see that piece next week for those of you who have been hanging out for it. And there has been a lot of requests to see how the Gigabyte Master stacks up. So yeah, I'll be tackling that next. And then after that, we'll be doing the $250 price point. And then we're, we're, we're pretty much done with the bulk of this testing. There'll be a few stragglers here and there. I want to look at some mini ITX boards. I have all the, all, all two of the M ATX boards. So we'll look at them as well. And just finally, as always, a big thank you to our Patreon members for supporting this sort of work, our VRM testing. And making sure that we can purchase any boards that we can't get samples for. If you're interested in joining our Patreon community, please check out the link in the video description. That'll give you access to some pretty cool perks, such as our monthly live stream uh, that Tim and myself do. Uh, you'll also get access to our private Discord server where you can chat with us and the rest of our really awesome community. 
and you'll get access to our behind the scenes content, which is also often quite a bit of fun. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.